Hello and welcome to our special election series, Battleground 2021, where we get you a detailed analysis of election news and views from the poll-bound states. I am Vishal Dahiya. Now, the next half an hour, we'll discuss and analyze the scenario in Assembly constituencies going to polls in the second phase in West Bengal and Assam. The campaigning for the second phase of both the Assam and West Bengal Assembly elections came to an end today. A high-stakes electoral battle is on the cards in this phase as well in these two seats. And all eyes will be on Nandigram constituency in West Bengal, where Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee will face off against her former ministerial colleague, Suvindu Adhikari. Now, voting will take place in 30 assembly constituencies in the second phase in West Bengal, from the districts of South 24 Parganas, Bakuda, and Purba Medinipur. Now, for a total of these 30 constituencies, 171 candidates are in the fray, including 152 men and 19 women. Now, in West Bengal, Bharatiya Janta Party and ruling AITC are contesting for all these 30 seats, while Congress, left parties and their alliance partner, Indian Secular Front, are fighting under the banner of Sanyukta Morsha. CPIM has fielded 15 candidates, Congress 9, BSP 7, CPI 2, AIFB and RSP 1 each, while there are 32 independents as well, along with 44 others are also in the fray. Now in Assam, 345 candidates, including 319 men and 26 women, are in the fray for 39 seats in the second phase of elections. Now, there are three main alliances this time, including the BJP-led National Democratic Alliance with partners Okham Gana Parishad AGP and the United People's Party Liberal UPPL. And Mahajot, or Ghana Alliance is led by the Congress. BJP has fielded 34 candidates, Congress 28, AJP 19, AIDUF 7, AGP 6, and BPF has four candidates, while 176 independents are also trying their luck this time around. On the show today, we will take a look at this political battle in both West Bengal and Assam. How exactly are these political parties and their candidates placed in these uh, elections and uh, which are the key factors and uh, key candidates to look out for. And more, more on this, we're joined by two distinguished experts. Let me first introduce them to you, beginning with Sandeep Fukan is joining us, senior journalist and deputy editor, The Hindu. We also have with us uh, Professor Sambit Pal, a political analyst, joining us. We'll talk about uh, the state of West Bengal. Welcome, both of you gentlemen. Let me begin with you, Professor Pal, and let's, uh, you know, Start with West Bengal, the state of West Bengal. Second phase, 30 seats, but all eyes seemingly will be on Nandigram. Exactly. I mean, that's that's the you know high stake, high profile seat that is going to polls on first of April, and everybody will be uh, looking at this battle between Mamta Banerjee, the sitting chief minister, and uh, her one-time confidant. Uh, Shubhendu Adhikari, who has joined BJP and is contesting this election. And we have seen that how this tension has grown in last couple of uh, weeks in Nandigram. And even today, when Mamata Banerjee was uh, campaigning there, we have seen there are a lot of you know people, a lot of BJP supporters were chanting slogans uh, in front of a, a, a cavalcade. And uh, at the same time, Shubhendu Adhikari had, had a huge rally, a huge procession in Nandigram where uh, Home Minister and BJP leader Amit Shah was, uh, was present. Uh, so so it's, it's a very interesting battle that's, that's going to uh, take place. And I would say that, you know, uh, it will depend on the day of the uh, polling, how these parties can mobilize their, uh, uh, mobilize their supporters and, uh, you know, activists. That will determine the result, which is still very, very, you know, it's, it's, it's a very tough call at this moment, Vishalji. Okay, uh, Professor Pal, if, you, if you're looking at the numbers, you know, uh, the previous performance of these parties uh, in these 30 particular seats, then there's quite an interesting, uh, you know, uh, facts which we can look at. Uh, during the 2016 uh, assembly polls, uh, the TMC had uh, quite a comfortable sailing in uh, most of these seats, but that number significantly came down in the 2019 uh, Lok Sabha polls. If we have to look at the leads in the assembly constituency, and BJP did improve uh, uh, quite a lot there. So, how do you look at uh, those figures and that trend also coming in? Yeah, 
that that's very important because you know in in 2016 assembly elections bjp's vote, vote percentage was about you know 3 to 10% in certain seats it's 6% but in certain uh, seats it was about 8% but when uh, it came to 2019 lok sabha elections their vote percentage had gone up to uh, as high as 50% in some seats and in uh, in, in most of the seats about 40% as we can see that you know Uh, though in South Chennai, uh, four Parganas, where you know there are only four seats which are going to polls in uh, on first of April, uh, TMC had comfortable uh, lead, but you know uh, BJP had came up uh, had come up as as number two in the seats. Uh, in East Midnapur, out of this nine seats, uh, BJP had lead in one. Uh, in West Midnapur, BJP had lead in three seats uh, in 2019 Lok Sabha elections, and in Bankura, which which is uh, where uh, about eight seats, yeah, eight seats will go for polls on first of April. In all these eight seats, BJP uh, were, had had a lead uh, in 2019 Lok Sabha elections, and that's very crucial. Uh, whether BJP can hold on to that ground or not, that's uh, that's crucial. In East Midnapur, even though TMC had done well in 2019. Uh, Uh, Lok Sabha elections, but that was credited uh, to uh, Shubhendu Dikari and his organizational skills. Uh, but now we'll have to see, since he has jumped the ship, and his father has also joined uh, BJP uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, and his brother is uh, not very active with TMC at this moment, who is also an MP. Uh, it, it's to be seen whether you know uh, Shubhendu Dikari can utilize his organizational skills and you know turn it around and you know uh, make it. Uh, work in favor of BJP in East Midnapur or not? So that's that's going to be very crucial uh, in this phase of election. Okay, definitely. These uh, this is uh, you know a sort of a litmus test for both uh, Swindu Adhikari there and uh, Chief Minister, incumbent Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee, who uh, both of them are obviously you know uh, fighting from Nandigram. Quite an interesting battle uh, happening there. But if you're looking at you know uh, obviously the organizational skills uh, of uh, these uh, two uh, top leaders and obviously the other uh, you know um, setup of the political party will be really really important. But uh, Professor. Pal, if you have to look at uh, the factors, there are issues specifically, not only uh, you know in 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 all these thirty seats, but also Nandi Gram. What exactly is it uh, which is becoming really important uh, from the people's point of view, from the voters' point of view? There. Yeah, see, uh, in Nandi Gram was uh, the hub of anti-land acquisition movement in two thousand seven eight, and that had actually helped Mamta Banerjee along with Singur. to come to power in 2011 there were other factors of course for the downfall of left government at that time but in this election the land acquisition issue the industrialization issue that is taking a back seat even the drinking water irrigation issues uh, employment issues those are very important and the left and uh, the sanjukta uh, sanjukta morcha candidate minakshi mukhopadhyay who is also a uh, youth leader uh, of cpim's uh, youth wing diyfi she is trying to you know raise this issue but now it has become a battle of personalities in uh, in nandigram and as shubhendu digar is trying to you know say trying to tell the electorate that you know if you uh, get me elected get bjp elected it will be a double engine government that is what uh, they they are saying uh, the prime minister uh, the home minister and all of the leaders who are going to uh, going to is bengal they are promising uh, a lot of you know developmental issues that 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 uh, you no know, development in west bengal if there are you know uh, government of the same party in both at the state and the center and shubhendu dikar is also talking about that on the other hand mamta banerji is trying to talk about the the, the uh, you know role and development um, schemes that he had that that she had taken and she is trying to project that and trying to tell people that you know bjp is a threat to uh, west bengal to the bengalis because they are outsiders who are coming to bengal so you know insider outsider debate is being played in a, in a, at, a, at a very high pitch and of course uh, you know the issue of women because mamta banerjee is trying to project herself as uh, the symbol of uh, you know uh, uh, the, the the daughter of daughters of bengal and that is what she is trying to project herself as uh, and of course women votes will be very crucial in this election in west bengal there is no doubt about that and bjp has also promised a lot of sauce for the women in their uh, shankal patra as well so a lot of issues are coming up but again i'll say that in nandigram Uh, in this phase of election the focus will be on nandigram and uh, uh, and it, it's going to be uh, a battle of personalities 
between Mamata Banerjee and Shubhendra Dikari. And of course, the organization will play a big role in uh, you know, deciding the result of this phase. Uh, it is uh, Nandigram all the way as far as West Bengal uh, second phase is concerned, although there are 29 other seats as well uh, which will be going to polls. But I was saying earlier, and as Professor Paul is also pointing out, uh, all eyes will be on uh, the Nandigram Assembly constituency there where Mamta Banerjee is contesting against uh, Suvindu Adhikari. Let me also bring in uh, Sandeep Fukan now. Sandeep uh, is joining us uh, on uh, Assam. Uh, Assam, uh, Sandeep, 39 seats in the second phase. Uh, in, in lower Assam area, what are the key, uh, you know, constituencies or key faces we should be uh, watching out for in this uh, phase of assembly polls in Assam there? Sandeep, you will have to unmute yourself. Can you hear me, Sandeep? Can you hear me, Vishal? Yes, yes, Sandeep, can we can hear, hear you now. Yes, please. Uh, yeah, so in terms of faces, I think, uh, uh, you know, a couple of ministers uh, like Piju Sajarika, he is the Minister of State for Health, uh, and uh, he is a close aide of Himanto Vishwa Sharma. He is contesting from a constituency called Jagi Road, not too far away from Guwahati. Uh, then there is Parimal Shukla Vaidya, he is contesting. Uh, from Barak Valley. So tomorrow's, uh, um, sorry, 1st of April's uh, voting will be crucial crucial for uh, two reasons. Uh, this will be uh, among the Bengali Hindu voters, it will be uh, easy for the BJP uh, to really sort of reach out because of their stance with regard to the Citizenship Amendment Act. But uh, it will also be interesting because there are uh, there are constituencies with substantial minority votes uh, where the uh, the consolidated or the alliance between Congress and uh, AIDUF, uh, Badruddin Ajwal's All India uh, United Democratic Front will also come into play. So uh, I would say that phase two and phase three are very crucial uh, for the Mahajot, uh, you know, the Congress led Mahajot, because uh, this is the area that they are looking to do well much more than Upper Assam that voted uh, on March 27th. And uh, if the Congress really has to pose a big challenge to the BJP, then they will have to do excellent performance in the, in the next two phases uh, okay. uh, you know, that, that go on uh, polls on 1st of April and April 6th. Okay, but that but that, that seems like quite an uphill task here in, in the second phase, uh, Sandeep, if you look at 2016 numbers, because, uh, you know, the BJP had won 22 seats out of these 39 in 2016. Uh, their alliance partner, AGP, had won uh, two, wherein AIUDF uh, five and the Congress uh, could manage uh, in 2016 only six. So it is, if you're looking at the 2016 number, it is uh, 24 versus 16, uh, 11 rather. Yes. Yeah, but, you know, uh, uh, that, that is because, you know, a lot of there would have been many constituencies where the contest would have been closed and it would have been an entirely different uh, scenario mm -hmm. if Congress and uh, AIUDF had come together because the minority vote got split and uh, that gave uh, advantage to the BJP on several seats. So that is that is the uh, that is the rationale behind Congress and AIUDF coming together. I mean, not too long ago, um, you know, when Mr. Atmal started his party, at that point of time, Tarun Gogoi would uh, his characteristic uh, question used to be, "Who is Atmal?" Now, from that stand to actually coming together, fighting the elections together, means that uh, it's a much weaker Congress today. Uh, both in terms of presence, in terms of seat and, and their political clout. That's why they want that, uh, you know, at least among the minority voters, they want a consolidation of uh, the anti-BJP votes. And that is why they have come together. In some seats, of course, they will have friendly fight. But uh, on many seats, coming together could make a difference. 
Okay, okay. Uh, so let's see what exactly happens there with uh, this alliance uh, in place. Uh, because BJP, if you look at 2016 numbers, uh, does have uh, quite a comfortable lead on these uh, seats there specifically in Assam. Uh, Sandeep, one more uh, question here, and that's quite uh, significant and important to understand uh, before, uh, you know, these seats uh, go for uh, polls. Uh, is uh, if you look at the campaigning for the second phase of poll, what are the highlights and what are the key issues uh, which both the parties are banking upon, and that is alliances, uh, the NDA led by uh, BJP and the other alliance, uh, the opposition alliance led by Congress, uh, and from the voters' point of view as well, what exactly seems to be uh, really important for them? In the Barak Valley region, uh, it is very clear that uh, the BJP would pitch uh, the pro-CA stance uh, among the Bengali Hindu voters, and they, they will find wide acceptance. And for the alliance, it will be just the reverse. Uh, you know, they are unlikely to get uh, they are unlikely to get much support. Uh, at least, uh, I, I don't see the Congress getting much support among Bengali Hindus uh, because of their uh, no to CA stance. But uh, what they will do is that they will try and reach out to the minority voters, saying that you know we cannot allow the BJP to uh, you know take a position on issues like citizenship. On the basis of religion. And many of these seats, I mean, I'm not specifically talking about phase two seats, Vital, because phase two has 39 and phase three has 40. Now, if I club these two uh, phases, of the 79 phase two, uh, phase two and phase three seats, of these 79 seats, there are 28 seats where, uh, you know, the Muslims are a majority or they, they dominate. So uh, clearly the Mahajot will have an advantage there. Mm -hmm. There are about 16 odd seats which are dominated by the indigenous local tribals and indigenous people. Clearly that's a, you know, these are all, uh, these seats have been sort of analyzed uh, on the basis of very polarized, you know, you have to see through a very polarized lens and you see that clearly on those 16 seats, uh, they will have uh, the BJP will have an advantage. There are about 12 odd seats in the Boroughland area where the former ally part alliance partner of the BJP, the Borough People's Front, they have now come to the Mahajur. So okay. that is going to be another interesting because you know another interesting they, they will not only they are not only likely to get borough votes, uh, but they are also the alliance, uh, that is Congress and AIUDF, they haven't fielded any of their candidates, which means that the non borough votes of, uh, you know, Bengalis, of, you know, you have a good mix of other ethnic uh, communities who live in the borough territorial region. So those voters who have traditionally voted for AIUDF or the Congress, even their votes will add to the BPF. So that's a significant uh, strategy. Okay. Which is why I said that. Phase two and phase three are crucial uh, for the alliance. Uh, whether it works or not, these two phases will tell whether the alliance has actually worked on the ground or not. Otherwise, to be fair, of these 79 seats, 2016, if you look at the numbers, BJP had won 40 of them. But remember, there were many other factors, like BPF was part of that alliance, and many of the seats, 12 seats in the borough region, uh, you know, fall within the NDA lab, that is no longer the case. So all those permutation and combination will have to look at. But okay. broadly, we can say that the impact of the Congress Mahajur will be seen in the next two phases. Okay, uh, that looks like, you know, a lot of uh, permutation combinations in terms of uh, alliances have changed on the ground in the state of Assam and we'll have to wait and watch as to how, you know, these uh, things uh, will affect, have an effect on uh, the voters there on, on the ground, while the BJP would obviously want to retain its lead. Uh, the opposition uh, led by Congress uh, would want to cover the lost ground there in these, uh, uh, you know, segments in, in the second phase, as uh, Sandeep was pointing out. Sandeep, I'll come back to you uh, on a very important aspect as well, but let me first bring in Professor Sambit Pal on that. Uh, Professor Pal, we were talking about, you know, the, uh, the kind of issues which are likely to hold sway 
way in those 30 seats in uh, the second phase in West Bengal. Let's talk about a certain section of voters, and that's the young population, the young voters, uh, are not only the first-time voters, but between 18 and 35. Uh, they're quite a significant number. So in terms of those 30 seats, how do you see you know, things playing out from their point of view and the issues which might be really, really important to them? Yes, employment is, of course, the issue uh, that that will impact them, and also recruitment in uh, in in, in uh, you know teaching services in West Bengal that has been a controversial issue in the in, in the uh, in, in TMC regime. Uh, so youth uh, will be crucial in, in which way they are going. Uh, that's to be seen. And left is trying to you know woo these young voters by fielding a lot of young candidates, but whether they can actually. Uh, you know, uh, get that vote back to their kitty or not, that's to be seen because uh, they have, you know, come down to about five to six percent votes in all these seats that are going to polls uh, in 2019 locks of elections. Uh, another thing, Vishalji, I'll, I'll, I'll like to mention that in Nandigram, especially, the minority votes and this, this, this division between minority votes and Hindu votes, that will also play a crucial role because Shubhendu Adhikari, the BJP candidate, has been you know, talking about this since day one, that, you know, we have 70% and they have just 30%, uh, referring to the Hindu votes and the minority votes. And there is a, there is a you know, uh, high-pitched battle to get that 70% uh, Hindu votes. And we have seen how Mahatma Banerjee uh, had been hopping to uh, different, uh, you know, temples while while filing her nomination. And Shubhendu Odhikar is also doing the same thing and also referring to a lot of, you know, uh, refer uh, referring to a lot of uh, you know terms which are uh, you know the kind of uh, uh, which which are kind of attack on uh, Mamta Banerjee uh, in a sense. So okay. uh, youth voters, this you know uh, minority and majority voters, they will also play a crucial role in these states. Okay, definitely there it is. Uh, you know, uh, Sandeep, uh, as far as uh, Sam is concerned, you spoke about a lot of permutation combinations and, you know, issues out there uh, on the ground, uh, both from the political party's point of view. But if you're looking at the voters' point of view there as well, uh, two specific segments, you know, the tea garden workers and the young voters there in Assam, how do you see things moving from their perspective in this particular phase, second phase of polling? Well, actually, uh, bulk of the tea gardens were uh, in, of course, there will be some uh, tea gardens in Dorong district as well, in the Boro territorial uh, region as well. But uh, bulk of the tea gardens voted on March 27th, uh, the Upper Assam, uh, Upper Assam region. Mm -hmm. There are some gardens here. Uh, and as you know, that both sides have made uh, living conditions and uh, payment of wages a, a big factor. For example, uh, among the tea garden workers, uh, you know, the Congress talks about a guarantee of giving them 365 rupees daily wages. Whereas the Sonoal government, uh, they had, uh, in the last elections, they had promised 350, but it wasn't the case. Uh, now it has come to 217. Very recently, just before the model code of conduct came into force, the government, the local government, had increased uh, the daily wages by 50 rupees. So uh, it's, I think, 270 ru 17 rupees uh, right now. Mm -hmm. But even that has been, that has been challenged by some of the tea associations. In addition to that, of course, the government, uh, you know, the Sonwal government talks about a lot of welfare schemes. And uh, if I can mention, there is one scheme called Urunadoi. Urunadoi is an umbrella scheme, Vishal. Uh, you know, that sort of offers cash assistance uh, under several heads. If a family, if a poor family, uh, if a daughter is getting married, she's entitled to uh, loans uh, or uh, grant from the government to buy gold uh, ornaments or jewelry. Uh, uh, similarly, uh, if a child uh, has passed his class 12 and is uh, wanting to study, uh, go in for higher studies, then again, a study loan is offered. So those kind of uh, you know, those kind of uh, incentives or welfare schemes are being talked about or pitched by the government uh, okay. as opposed to Congress's guarantee. Congress also has a five uh, you know five guarantee. I think uh, the uh, one guarantee is of course apart from no to CEA implementing CEA, the other guarantees are to pay uh, to create five lakh employment. Uh, in the public sector and nearly 25 lakh 
employment in the private sector uh, to uh, offer cash assistance to homemakers. to homemakers 2000 rupees a month uh, daily i have already mentioned about daily wages for team mm-hmm. workers but unemployment is a big issue as uh, professor pal was also talking about in bengal unemployment is a big issue even in assam uh, and the, you know the promise that was made by the bjp and they didn't quite deliver on that promise in terms of creating the number of jobs that they had promised they have created jobs but not to the extent that they had promised and that is something that the congress is pointing out again and again and they are saying look we are not promising you the moon they are only promising you 5 lakh jobs in 5 years which is the government sector of course which is 1 lakh jobs a year okay and uh, that is and and this is doable and we've done the math for it okay so what they have tried tell to the youth segment specifically okay okay so clearly both sides uh, seemingly have uh, done their homework and uh, have tried to woo the voters there in both assam and west bengal as well there it is all about uh, you know the second phase of uh, assembly polls in uh, both these states uh, 30 seats in west bengal 39 seats in assam are uh, going to polls on 1st of april thank you so much uh, sandeep fukan as well as uh, professor sambit pal for sharing your views and insights it's uh, on the permutation combinations politically electorally on the ground and also what it is that is really important for the voters uh, once again uh, before we go we'll urge all the voters in these uh, 69 assembly segments in both west bengal and assam to come out on 1st of april and cast your vote uh, because ultimately it is you who will have to decide who forms the government and what kind of decisions would you want uh, the government uh, of that day to take for you we'll come back again tomorrow with a different aspect and a different scenario in other states of the uh, you know these uh, assembly polls as well apart from west bengal and assam kerala tamil nadu and puducherry are also going to polls we'll come back till then keep watching sunset television thank you